Hello friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. In today's video, we are finishing up my makeup collection and declutter series. I can't believe it's finally over. It's been a lot of work, a lot of fun, very satisfying, and I'm excited to just kind of complete this. Today's video is going to be all about my eyeshadow palettes. I'm doing a full eyeshadow palette collection and declutter. I don't even know how many I have as of this moment. Well over 100 for sure. I'll get into the numbers and stuff once we get into the declutter. It's a lot. I'm gonna try to be as brutal as possible and just really condense it down to things that I truly love. I'm sure I'm gonna still keep a lot of palettes, don't get me wrong, but, I do just want to curate it down a little bit more. Before we get into it though, I did of course film this look. I film every look you see on camera. It should already be up on my Instagram and TikTok by the time this video goes up. And let me just give you my jewelry details. These plugs are from Love Kills Boutique and I think this choker is from Shop Sun Co. You can use my affiliate code BattyBean for 10% off. All right, we're gonna get into it. I'm gonna show you close-ups of all the palettes. I've done looks with all of the palettes you're gonna see today. You can search my channel. I've also done multiple Instagram videos with lots of these as well. I have lots of content out for you if you need inspiration so you can go check those out. I do also keep all of my affiliate codes down in my description box as well. If you feel like checking out any of these brands, I might have a code with them and I appreciate it very much if you use it. All right, so with all that being said, let's just hop into it and do some decluttering. All right, let's get into this little collection and declutter, or should I say big collection and declutter? We have 194 palettes to go through. I don't wanna to ramble too much right now because this is probably gonna be long, but I do wanna hop into those quick disclaimers because otherwise, I always get comments or questions about this. Number one, if I happen to declutter your number one favorite palette in your whole collection, please do not get offended. We just all have different preferences. I'm thrilled that it's your favorite. It just didn't work out for me the same way it worked out for you. And number two, please do not ask me to send you anything. I feel weird about giving used makeup to people I do not know. I give dibs to my friends and family. And last but not least, please do not feel pressured to declutter your collection. If that is not what's right for you, it's just what's right for me. So without further ado, let's just get into these 194 palettes. I guess really quick before we hop into it, I don't even know if I really have a specific goal other than to obviously just condense it. I know I've been pretty ruthless with my declutters thus far. This one, like, I do want to condense it. I definitely have way too many, but I really don't know how much I'm going to condense it by. I guess I would love for it to be closer to 100, but as long as it's under 150, I think I'll feel better. Um, in a perfect world, I'd love for it to be under 100. That's usually what I strive for every year, but I gained so many palettes this year and I love so many of them. It's hard, I'm such an eyeshadow lover, and I'm gonna do the best I can, but I do still like to have a variety. I like things in my collection, I like the different options. I'm just gonna kinda go with my gut and just kind of assess if it sparks joy, if it's something I could see myself reaching for again. Maybe I've discovered something over this year that replaces something old. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of go with my gut on this. I'm not gonna go in any particular order, but this is my Rare Beauty palette in the shade Confident Energy, or the name Confident Energy, I should say. This one is okay. The eyeshadow quality isn't bad. It's an all shimmer palette, but it's not one that I see like really reaching for again. It didn't blow my socks off, so I think I'm safe to declutter this one. Next is my Daily Dose of Love palette from Essence. Again, this is another one that's not really horrible but it just didn't really blow my socks off. I feel like if you were looking for like a good cheap palette, like this would be fine, but at the same time, I'd probably quicker recommend a ColourPop palette over this one. This wasn't horrible, but it's not one that I really need to keep either. Getting into Aether Beauty, this is the Topaz Mini Crystal Quad. And while this is so cute, I love the tones in this. I don't really reach for quads too often unless it's really special. And this one, like while it's very cute, it's not so special that I feel the need to specifically reach for these four shades. So I think I'm gonna declutter this one even though I do really enjoy the formula and I like the colors, I just don't see myself really reaching for it. My next Aether Beauty one is my Joshua Tree palette. It is so cute. It's an all matte palette. It's kind of these dusty, deserty, grungy tones. I love the colors in here and I think this is so pretty. It's a very solid matte palette. The mattes blend really, really beautifully, and I do think I want to keep this one around because it's a very fun and kind of unique color story. I like these dusty tones. And this is my last Aether Beauty one. I think it's called the Moonlight Palette. It's literally not written on here at all, but it looks like this. I actually talk about this in my upcoming Winter Favorites video, and I just love this. I love the colors in here. It reminds me of an enchanted lake in the middle of a forest with fairies running amok. It's just so pretty. The shimmers are very pretty and sparkly. I mean, they're not like 
crazy glitzy shimmers, but they're just like twinkly and ethereal and very cute and the mattes are really nice and blendable. I wanna keep this one as well. I think it's very enchanting. Next is my Illamasqua Beyond Artistry palette. I discovered this one. I think they sent it to me tail end of last year, very beginning of this year. This one is just fine. The shimmers aren't anything too insane. They're not bad, but it just doesn't blow me away. And if I'm gonna reach for an all shimmer palette, it really does need to be something a little more special than this. So I'm gonna pass this one along as well. Next is my Certify Affinity 2 palette. It's really hard to like fit this in the camera because it's very long. Um, I've had such a hard time decluttering this one every single year. I just really like the different blues and greens. The duochromes are really pretty. I love the range of shades in here all the way from like pastel to really deep. I just can never seem to get rid of this one, so I think I'm gonna keep this one kicking around again. I still really enjoy this one from time to time. Next from Dito Cosmetics, this is my Neon Palette. I really enjoyed this when I used it. I thought the mattes were really solid. They are bright, but they blend nicely. I don't really consider these neons, though. I just consider them bright. There is a difference in my mind. Um, I just haven't reached for it at all this year, and I have discovered my new favorite rainbow palette of all time this year, which I will get to later, so I'm gonna declutter this one. Next from Dito Cosmetics is my Athena Palette, and I just, I wanna keep these because they're just pretty, the packaging, and I like the color stories, but you know, the formula really just does not blow me away. And I haven't reached for any of my Dito palettes at all this year. So I think that's an indicator that I should probably let these go. I did declutter one of these palettes last year. It was my least favorite of the trio of like goddess palettes. And I, I think I can pass this one along as well. The last of the Dito palettes is the Hera palette. And it's really pretty. I love these like kind of primary colors all shoved together. I think it's very aesthetically pleasing. There is a glitter in all these palettes, which I don't love, but the colors themselves are pretty. It's just, again, not such an amazing formula that I feel the need to keep it kicking around. So I'm gonna pass this one along as well. My Blush Tribe Paulina palette. This is another one I just cannot seem to let go of. It truly is still really pretty. Blush Tribe doesn't exist anymore. I think they rebranded like a year ago, but I don't even remember what they rebranded to and I truly don't feel like I've seen anything about it. So maybe they didn't really rebrand or maybe they did, but then they stopped, I don't know. But this is still such a beautiful palette. I love the colors in here. The shimmers are really pretty. I think I'm still gonna keep this one kicking around even though it long time does not exist anymore. Sometimes I feel bad about keeping things that don't exist anymore because like you can't get it anymore and I feel bad using things that you can't get. But at the same time, like we can always dupe things in our own collection. If I were to use this on camera, you can just play with your own purples and greens and pinks and stuff like that if you felt like recreating it. I think this is one that I still want to keep in my collection. Oh, the Deuce palette from Juvia's Place. I still think this is so cute. I feel like this is one of the least liked palettes from Juvia's Place, but I still love it with my whole heart. I love the pinks and the browns. I love this minty green. The shimmers are so pretty. These two in particular make beautiful face highlights, and this one in particular makes a beautiful blush. I still love this palette. I don't know what to tell you. I think it's so cute. And my last Juvia's Place palette is the Tribe palette. These are the only two I still have in my collection. I've decluttered a lot of Juvia's Place over the years, but these two are still my favorite. However, I'm debating keeping this one. I did use it over the fall this year, and I thought it was really pretty, but I don't know. I just feel like I have other kind of like grungy fall color story similar to this. I do really like this one. I think I'll keep this one. The shimmers are really pretty. I like the pops of neon. I like the pops of grunge. <laughs> I think this is a fun one to keep kicking around. All right, getting into Sugar Pill. Just so you know, I'm keeping all six of the ones we're about to talk about. This is my fun size palette. It's so cute. It's such a good combination of kind of like pastel neon. Like you can wear them as more of a sheer wash and keep them pastel, or you can build them up to be incredibly vibrant. I love this little guy. And we have the fun size too. Look at his little boba. That's so cute. Um, this is adorable. I actually think I like this one more than the fun size one, just because I love the weird tones in here. Like we have kind of this weird, chartreuse limey color, this weird kind of Kelly greenish turquoisey shade. I like this weird purple. There's so many good colors in here and they're so cute. This is my first Sugar Pill Capsule palette. This is the pink one. I did shatter a shade, unfortunately. There used to be a bright limey shade in there. Actually, this shade used to be in here, but I dropped it and that shade also fell out and I put it in the wrong spot. But regardless, I still love the capsule palettes. I think the mattes blend beautifully. The blush in each palette is beautiful and the shimmers are so lovely. I'm 
sad that they haven't come out with another capsule palette since the tail end of last year. I'm ready for a new one, but who knows if they're doing them anymore. This is the second capsule that came out. This is the orange one and it's so cute. And this truly just takes me back to like, right when the pandemic started because I got this palette right around the time that my salon was closing down for two months and it, it, this feels like a time capsule to hold. It's so weird, but I still love this color story. I think the shimmers are beautiful. This particular blush in this palette is my favorite out of the four. I love this guy. The third capsule is my favorite capsule. This is the black one. And it's just so spooky and grungy and amazing. I love, love, love the tones in here, the weird purples and the dirty, dingy green and yellow. I love the shimmery kind of purple blue. It's so pretty. And last but not least is the anniversary palette. They came out with this for their 10 year anniversary. Again, I wanna say at the tail end of last year, that or January of this year, it's something like that. And it's really cute. It's just very springy and lovely. And I also did do a video where I did swatch comparisons of all of these capsule palettes. So if you wanna see comparisons, you can check out that video because there really aren't a lot of dupes between the four. I think this is great and I love them. And I love just, they're just so cute and unique. All right, getting into Ace Beauté, this is my Oceanic palette. This is still the older formula because they have reformulated all of their old palettes to be their new formula. This is still the old formula. I personally never had a problem with the old formula, but I do like the new formula as well. And I love this color story. It's so bright and grungy. I love these tones in here. I love the weird shades of turquoise and green and blue. It's just all good things. And honestly, this one in my Menagerie Whale song is making me not want to keep my Certify one anymore but I also kind of want to keep my Certify one. As of right now, I'm still keeping the Certify and I'm also keeping this. Next is my Flare palette. This was my favorite palette in my whole collection for probably like two plus years straight. I loved this one and I still love it. I'd probably still put it in my top 10. I did keep it in my top five recently in my ranking my top 10 palettes video, but I've discovered a few things since then. I think this would still be in my top five. I just love it. There are so many beautiful grungy colors and it's very bright, but it's also like deep in some ways. I think this is so pretty and I love it. And again, this is the old formula, but they have reformulated it if you didn't like the old formula. This is my Tropical Vibes palette. This is a newer palette from them. So this does have the new formula. And actually this is my favorite palette from them now. I think I like this one more than my Flair, believe it or not. I just, these colors speak to me on another level. I love this kind of a color story and I love like the pop of blue down here. There are so many cool things about this palette. It makes me so happy. And this one is my Nostalgia palette. This came out last summer with their new formula. And I still think this one's a lot of fun. It's very bright and playful. To me, it's kind of like a good, like late summer transitioning into fall kind of color story. I think this one's really pretty and I'm gonna keep this one as well. Next, getting into the four OG long ones from Ace Beauté. This is my Blossom Passion palette. It's just lots of pinks and reds and it's very cute. I still really like this one and I think I might still want to keep it, but I'm also debating because I have some other like pinky things. No, this one has done me really solid over the years. I think I'm going to keep this one. This one, however, I'm actually going to declutter. This is my Slice of Paradise. It was deemed my favorite rainbow palette for quite a long time, but I did discover my new Holy Grail rainbow palette this year, and I just truly believe I don't need multiple rainbow palettes. Um, so I think I'm going to pass this one along. Like I just have one that I think I'm going to reach for over this one every single time. And yeah, I'm going to pass this one along. It's been fun, but it's time to go. This is my Paradise Fallen palette, and it's so pretty. It's just so deep and wonderful, and I love these purple tones, and there's really delicious kind of grays and purpley browns, and it's just a really cool color story. I like this one a lot. And last but not least, we have the Classical Paradise palette. This is my, like, autumnal lovely color story. I love this one so much. This like weird green shade is amazing. I really just love the tones in here. Every single autumn I want to bust this one out. It's so pretty. All right, let's do some alter ego. This is the Temptress palette. This is a dupe for the ABH Sultry palette and I don't think they sell this one anymore. I could be wrong, but I feel like they don't sell this one anymore. I still think it's really pretty. I really like the glitzy shimmers in here and I like the different mattes, but I'm unsure if I need it. I just, I don't know. You know, I feel like I need to start making a maybe pile because some of these I'm kind of wavering on and I feel like I need to get a maybe pile going to like revisit at the end when I figure out what I'm for sure keeping. So I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile 
And I'm also gonna put my Tribe from Juvia's Place in the Maybe pile and my Certify Affinity 2 in the Maybe pile because those are the other two that I kind of wavered on. This is my, I think this is called the Luster Charm palette. Yes, the Luster Charm palette from Alter Ego. This is a dupe from something Pat McGrath, I think but I don't remember the name of it because I'm not very well versed in Pat McGrath. Um, this is a pretty palette. This sacred shade in particular is such a wet looking shimmer. Think of Ritz Super Shock Shadow from ColourPop. Um, but this just is not a palette I need to keep kicking around. I'm not a big neutrals person, so it has to be a really special neutral palette for me to want to keep it. This is the Aurora. This one is a dupe for the Sunrise or Sunset from Natasha Denona. I'm not sure. Sun something. I still really like this one. It's very bright and fun and summery, and I think it's so cute. The shimmers are absolutely beautiful, so I want to keep this one. This is the Blue. Blooms palette. This is a dupe for the Natasha Denona Love palette, I think, and I still really like this one. I don't like that the newer Alter Ego palettes, there are some shades that have kind of this, like this one for instance. It's like a creamy texture, so it's like a cream kind of matte, but they act like a powder, like you can still use them like with a brush. They just aren't as pigmented as the powders. And listen, I know someone's gonna say it, supposedly Natasha Denona also does this creamy texture in their palettes, but... Uh, it's not my personal favorite. It's not bad. I just, I like their powder mattes more. So I wish that every cream that was in this palette, which it's only two, it's this one and the red over here. I wish those were the regular powder formula. But other than that, I still really like this palette. I love the reds and pinks and purples. I like the different shimmers. So I think I want to keep this one. This one is the Canyon palette. Uh, I honestly don't know what this one's a dupe for. The bronze palette, maybe. I'm not well versed in Natasha Denona palettes. I'm so sorry. And kind of the same thing. I really like the shimmers in here. I think they're really pretty, but it's not so special of a neutral palette that I feel the need to keep this one kicking around. And typically when it's neutrals, I do enjoy more cool tones and these ones lean a little bit more neutral, warm in a lot of places. So this just isn't really gonna be a go-to for me. So I think I can give this one to a friend. This is the Goddess palette. This one is so pretty. It's very neutral heavy, but I like the tones in here. Even though they're warm, they're like grungy warm. They kind of lean like, some mustardy kind of tones. I love the shimmers in here. I love the different teals. This one is a really, really good one in my opinion. It's all the powder matte formula and the shimmers in here are just so incredibly special. I love this one. This one I feel very glam when I use it. I'm keeping this one. This is the Shadow Kiss palette. I wanna say it's a dupe for the Glam palette. And this is a cool tone fantasy. This is beautiful. I wanna say this is all the regular powder matte formula. I don't think there were any creams in here, but I could be wrong. It's been a little while since I've used it. This one I wanna put in the maybe pile because I think I wanna keep this one, but I wanna see what other cool tone neutral palettes I'm comparing this to. So I might keep this one, I might declutter. It's going in the maybe for now. And last we have the Artemis palette. This is a dupe for the Metropolis palette from Natasha Denona. Again, this kind of has like those creamy powder mattes. I think there's only one regular powder matte and it's this one. I think, I don't remember. It's mostly shimmers though, and they're really, really pretty. I love these shimmers. I think they're very rich and very fun. So I think I wanna keep this one. I think this is a very special palette. All right, should we go over ColourPop? There's a lot of ColourPop, folks. Like a lot of ColourPop. So I think we should go ahead and go through these. Let's go over my couple of mega palettes first. This is the Your Golden palette. With this palette, I just feel like it's a bigger version of the Dream Street palette from Kathleen Lights back in the day. And it's very cute. Like the vibe of the palette is cute, but it's just too big for me. There's too many repetitive shades. It's just not one that I'm gonna reach for. It has to be a really special palette for me to keep a palette this big. Same with that Artemis palette. Like it has a lot more shades than I would prefer, but it has a lot of special shimmer so I keep it. This one, it's just not special enough, so I'm gonna give it to a friend. And this one is the Play Jewel palette. And this one is really pretty. I like the vibe in here as well. It's very colorful, but again, there's just a lot of repetitive shades. And it, like, the shades that I do like aren't so special that I feel like I should keep this whole palette just for those. So I'm gonna declutter this one as well. But if this was half the size, I would potentially keep it. But it's just not one that I feel like I'll use again. Let's do the nine pans next. This is the Blow and Smoke palette. I have the old, old packaging back when it used to be called Smoke Show, but now it's called Blow and Smoke. It looks like this. It is just a beautiful black gray color story, and it is honestly a staple in my collection. I don't use it all the time, but if I'm trying to go for this vibe, I do reach for this one every single time. I think it goes just so well, and it blends so nicely. I love the range of tones, and the shimmers are perfect, so I'm gonna keep this one. This is the Uh Huh Honey palette. This is very cute. I am to Debating not keeping this one anymore though. Can you believe it? It's just because I don't know how often I reach for it anymore. You know, 
I do love yellow. Yellow is one of my favorite eyeshadow colors to play with, but I don't know how badly I need this particular yellow palette. I'll put it in the maybe pile. This is the Cloud Spun palette. This one's very cute and playful, but my problem with this one is I do feel like, even though the shades look pretty different in the pan, I feel like they tend to look very similar on the eye. So I just don't know if I need to keep this one. I have some other pinky ones to talk about going forward that I think I would prefer to keep over this one. This is so cute. This is the Hello Kitty and Friends Snow Much Fun palette from ColourPop last winter. And it's absolutely adorable, but I just don't know if I need to keep it. I kind of want to keep it because it's cute, but I know I don't need to keep it, so I'm going to give this one to a friend. This is the ColourPop Tinkerbell Sprinkle a Little Magic Palette. I kind of hate the name. It's just so long. Um, but I think this color story is very cute. I love the greens. I love kind of the pinky neutrals, and the shimmers are really, really pretty. So I think I want to keep this one. I think it's a gorgeous color story. This is the Of Quartz Palette, and I do feel like I want to keep this one. It's just kind of those beautiful gray based neutrals with little shimmers in it. And I think it's quite lovely. I like that it leans more gray as far as the cool tone neutrals go. This one's a lot of fun for me. And comparatively, we can talk about my beloved That's Taupe palette. This is another cool tone neutrals palette, but this leans more cool toned brown rather than cool toned grays and grazy tones. Again, I love the range of mattes in here. I love that it goes from light to deep. I love the shimmers in here, so I'm definitely keeping this one. It's one of my favorite neutral palettes ever. And honestly, I'm looking at my Shadow Kiss palette next to these two, and I feel like I just have the things that I need in those two palettes combined that I don't need to keep this one. So I'm going to pass my Shadow Kiss palette from Alter Ego to a friend. This one is the High Tide palette. This is one of my favorite monochromatic palettes they've done. These teals are so beautiful. I love the range of light to deep you get in here and the shimmers are very, very pretty. I want to keep this one. All right, we have the Star Wars palettes. We have the Child palette and the Mandalorian palette. Here's what they look like. We have the green one. This is the Child palette. And then this one is the Mandalorian palette. The Child palette, I think, is such a fun color story. I love those greens and the shimmers and the brown. I think it's a really just delicious, swampy color story. The Mandalorian has really pretty, like, duochrome shimmers in the center. But I don't love the palette as a whole enough to keep it. Even though they do look good together, I just don't see myself going out of my way to reach for the Mandalorian. So I'm going to keep the child but declutter Mandalorian. This is the Lilac You A Lot palette. And I think this is actually a very cute color story. I love the playful tones in here. And I think the shimmers are delightful. I'm going to keep this one actually. I don't really have a whole lot of like purple focused color stories. And this is what I think I want to keep. This is the Wild Child palette. The reflectiveness is so hard to show on camera. Um, it's just like rich like neutrals. There is a glitter in here, which I don't love the glitter, but regardless, I'm not keeping a whole lot of like neutral palettes. So I think keeping this one like deep, like slightly warmer tone palette, I think this is a good one to have around. So I'm going to keep this one for that reason. This one is the Fine Feathered. And while I do think it's really cute, I just don't know how badly I need it. I feel like I get similar berry vibes from my She's and Parties palette from Melt. And I feel like I have another berry toned palette. Oh, it's the one I'm gonna talk about next. Um, I'll show it right here. So this is the Wine and Only, it looks like this. It's kind of more like burgundy tones, you know? And I also have the Orchid You Not. This one's kind of purpley berry tones. And I don't feel like I need all of these. So looking at all of these, this one definitely gives me Melt She's and Parties vibes the most, but this one also kind of does. Oh, it's so tough, actually, looking at all of these together. I do really like my wine and only. I think it's really pretty and deep. The fine feathered, I do think I can live without. The orchid you not, I'm wavering on, so I'm going to put this one in the maybe pile, but I'm leaning towards keep with this one. This one is the Cherry Crush palette. This one I think is a lot of fun. It's very bright, kind of pinky reds. I like the little pop of purple down here. I feel like this is broken up into nice rows. Like we have kind of pinky tones, more reddish tones, and then purpley tones. This one I think is a lot of fun, and I could see myself reaching for it again, so I'm going to keep it. And the last of the nine pans is the big pop palette. It's just a all matte kind of warm neutrals palette. Leans a little orangey. I kept this one last year just because I don't really have a lot like this in my collection, but I didn't really find myself needing to use it. I feel like when I really need these tones, I can kind of 
pick throughout my collection, so I don't think I need to keep this one anymore. We can go over my slightly larger palettes next. This is my Hocus Pocus palette, the original Hocus Pocus. I don't have the newer one. The newer one was honestly ugly to me. Uh, this one I still think is cute though. I do feel like it could still have been condensed down a teeny bit more, but I do think it's really pretty. I like the depth in here and I like the shimmer, so I'm gonna keep this one. This is the Rudolph the red Nose Reindeer palette. This one just came out and I think it's so delightful. It's so cute. It does give me Rudolph vibes. Again, it could have been condensed down a little bit more, but I can't lie and say this doesn't spark joy, so I'm gonna keep it. This is the Roaring Hearts. This also came out fairly recently. It was their first holiday collection. And I mean, it's okay. Like, I'm not a big neutrals person. I mostly just used it just to like use it and test it out, but I don't think I need to keep this one. So I'm gonna declutter this one. And now getting into the 12 pans, Let's start with the Lemoncello palette. I actually love this palette. I don't know what it is. This color story is very, very pleasing. I like the pop of blue and yellow. I like the two weird shimmers, like we have the yellow and this greenish color. I think the neutrals play really nicely with it, so I think I wanna keep it. This is the Powerpuff Girls palette. And this one, while I think it's very fun and very bright, it's not like sparking a ton of joy for me, so I think I can probably pass this one along. Like I don't need to keep every bright palette, you know? This one though, this is the At Forest Sight palette from Raw Beauty Christie. This is still one of my favorite palettes from ColourPop. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the rich, deep tones. I'm definitely keeping it. This is my Nightmare Before Christmas palette. And while the color story doesn't scream Nightmare Before Christmas, I do still love the color story. It just takes me back to like middle school, high school scene kid era. <laughs> I think it's very fun. I love the bright pops. I love the depth. I think this is a beautiful color story. This is the What Dreams Are Made Of palette from the Lizzie McGuire collection. And it's another one where like the color story is very cute and it's aesthetically pleasing. I just don't know if I need to keep it. So I think I'm gonna give this one to a friend as well. This is the Lush Life palette. I think this is gorgeous. I love the rich just deep tones, very jungly. And I even like the neutrals paired with this. I think this one's fun. So I think I wanna keep this one as well. This is the Sweet Talk palette. And it's been one of my favorite palettes for springtime for the last couple of years. And I do still really like it, but I'm unsure if I still need to keep it, you know? I've just discovered so many other things. I'm gonna put this in my baby pile. And this is the So Very Lovely palette. And it really is so very lovely. It's very springy. I like the soft neutrals paired with the purples. I think this is a really cute one and I think I wanna keep it. In the last 12 pan is my My Little Pony palette. This one is so cute. This is an older one. This one came out years ago. I still really like this color story. I think it's very playful and very fun and very cute. And the little ponies are just so nostalgic to me. I want to keep this one. Did you think we were done? Nope, we got more. So now we're moving on to some of the little quads. And again, a quad has to be pretty special for me to keep it. So let's see if any of these are special enough. These are from the Summertime Hello Kitty collection. This one is Cherry Sweet. While it's very cute, I feel like I kind of get these vibes from the cherry palette I kept, the nine pan. So I'm gonna declutter this one. This one is Coco Cutie. And while like this is a really cute little blue quad, I just have so many blues in my collection that I don't think I need to keep this one. And honestly, Honestly, I really liked playing with all four of these together. So if this was just one palette, there's a chance that I would have kept it. But just broken up like this, it's hard for me to justify using them, you know? This one is pineapple cake. And it's so cute. And ooh, this is making me wonder if this would replace my Uh Huh Honey palette. All right, out of my two yellow palettes, you know, I think I'm gonna give it to the Uh Huh Honey because this has kind of these like golden honey tones and it has the bright tones and it has some duochrome. So this is solidifying that I wanna keep my Uh Huh Honey and I can pass this one along. And last out of these is my Teeny Keeny. And this is orange deliciousness, honestly. I love these oranges. This little quad is honestly a quad of oranges I would pick up again because the two shimmers are so beautiful and the mattes are very rich and I love these particular tones of orange. This one I'm actually gonna keep kicking around. And then we have the Animal Crossing quads. Well, definitely decluttering is my What A Hoot one. It's just all neutrals and like it's fine, but it's not a favorite of mine by any means. I love the packaging. I'm a huge Animal Crossing fan, but not enough to keep them. This one is La Belle of the Ball. And while this one is probably my favorite of the four, I still don't know if I need to keep it. The fact that there's a glitter in all of these really deters me because it's highly unlikely that I'll use the glitters. And I even kept a pressed glitter that looks similar to this already in my glitter video. So like that doesn't make me want to keep this one anymore. 
So I think I'll declutter it. Next is Five Star Island. This is Isabelle's quad. And I do like the pink yellow kind of combo. I wish all of them kind of had more of like a unique color story instead of just monochromatic, but you know, it is what it is. Regardless, I don't think I need to keep it. And last is Nook Ink. We have the green vibe. And again, very cute but I don't need to keep it, so I'm gonna pass it along. And did you think we were done? No, my friend, we have a bunch of like, five pans now. <laughs> All right, let's just cut to the chase. We have Thumper and we have Flower. Flower is the purple one, Thumper is the green one. They're cute, but not cute enough that I'm probably gonna go out of my way to reach for them again, so I'm gonna give these away to a friend. These next five are from a collection at the very beginning of 2021. These were their first five pans. This one is called Cherish. This one is called Crush. This one is called Lyric. This one is called Ballad. And this one is called Amour. And while some of these are cute color stories, I really haven't reached for them too much since they released, so I don't think I need to keep them. I can kind of get other vibes throughout my palettes that are similar, so I'm gonna give all of these to a friend. These next five are from the Spring Collection this year. This one is called Rumor Has It. This one is called Statement Piece. This is Too Hot. This one is High Society, and this one is Cashmere Forever. So this one, I do really like the different color stories in here. They're monochromatic, but I feel like they have a little bit of a different twist than like a typical monochromatic. I really do like High Society, so I think I wanna keep this one for sure. I do, however, think I can for sure pass on the pink one, Too Hot. I actually really do like Statement Piece. It's kind of just like peachy coral vibes, and I don't have a ton of that in my collection, so I think I wanna keep this one. And honestly, keeping that one is making me think, like, do I need to keep my Sweet Talk one? Because I can kind of use this one and pair it with neutrals, and I get the same vibe. I know this, like, looks terrible on camera because it's so reflective. And this one has pressed glitters that I don't really reach for, so I think I can declutter Sweet Talk finally. So then we have Cashmere Forever and Rumor Has It. They're very cute, but I'm definitely Definitely keeping some purple things from Menagerie later. And I feel like I just have so many different blues in my collection that I don't need to keep either of these. So there we go. And the last ColourPop palette I have is the Make It Fearless palette, which I still think is very cute. I like that it's more of a unique color story, but I don't think I need to keep this one. It's just kind of like those sunsetty vibes and I can kind of get that throughout different palettes in my collection. So I don't need to keep this one, but I do still respect the fact that this one isn't monochromatic. It makes me happy. All right, that was a lot. Let's keep it going. This is my Lime Crime Venus 2. It's the only Lime Crime palette I still have. And I I've kept it over the years because I do love the color story, but at this point I feel like I have so many grungy color stories that just blow this one out of the water that I don't need to keep this one anymore, so I think I can let this one go finally. This one is from Geology Cosmetics. This is the Pilbara palette, and I was really, really impressed with this one this year, actually. It's a beautiful kind of autumnal color story. I really enjoyed the mattes, and I felt like the shimmers were very beautiful and some were very shifty. I think I wanna keep this one. I think it's very cute, and I like how compact it is. This is my only Natasha Denona palette. This is my mini Tropic palette. This was a gift from a friend a long time ago, and I still think it's really cute, and I think I, I kinda just have to keep it. It's my only Natasha a Denona palette and it's very fun and I could see myself using it again so I want to keep it. This is my Tropical Traveler palette from Spoiled Cosmetics and it's just like not the best quality. It's not horrible but it's definitely not up to par with a lot of my other colorful things so I'm gonna pass this one along. On top of the fact that it's weirdly bulky for it being like a travel themed palette not for me. Keeping with Spoiled Cosmetics, this is my Dear Diary palette. And while I did really enjoy the tones in here, let me zoom out a teeny bit, there we go. <laughs> Can't fit the whole palette in the camera. Um, I did enjoy the quality of this one. I felt like it performed nicely. I just truly haven't felt the need to pull this one out at all this year. I just have other pastels in my collection that I reach for over this one. So I'm gonna give this one to a friend so it can actually get more use. And this one is the Slay for Salma palette from Spoiled Lips. And I do still think the color story really is pretty on this one. The shimmers are really pretty, but I just haven't been reaching for it. I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. Next up from Glaminatrix, this is my old Sandra Rose palette. I'm pretty certain they revamped this one recently with different shades, but I still love my OG one. I think it's very beautiful. You might be able to get all of these as singles, but I'm not positive, I really don't know. Um, but yeah, I wanna keep this one, it's gorgeous and the quality's amazing. And next is my You Beauty palette. It's actually one of my favorite palettes I tried this year. It's an Australian brand and everything in here is like Australian slang terms and like words and stuff like that. And it's very cute and there are multi-chromes in here and it's just absolutely stunning. I love this palette. Next is the e.l.f. Electric Mood palette. This is one of my biggest disappointments of the year. <laughs> this just does not perform great. e.l.f. eyeshadows just don't really do it for me. And I've heard from you guys that the, like, the bite size quality is way different and better than like 
the bigger palette quality. This is just not great. Some of the shimmers are really pretty, but some of them are very stiff and hard and they don't work well and the mattes are just subpar. So I'm gonna give this one away. I don't know if any of my friends would even want this one since like I'm not a fan of it in the slightest, but maybe someone would. All right, Urban Decay, this is my Eternals palette. The packaging is very annoying. It's this big pop-up and then you have to kind of Gosh, I can't even get it open. Honestly scared I'm gonna break a nail every time I pry that thing open. Um, but it's just very bulky for very subpar shadows. Like, they're not bad. They're just nothing extraordinary. The shimmers down here at the bottom are pretty, but it's just not enough for me to want to go through the hassle of opening the Star and Palette. So I'm gonna give this one away. And this one is the Urban Decay Naked Wild West. Honestly, I don't know what it is, but when they sent this one to me, I was a little excited, but then when I went to use it, I was just so bored. Something about using this palette just did not inspire me. I wasn't excited to play with it, and it's not a bad color story objectively, like some of this down here is unnecessary, but I don't know what it is. This one just bored me, so I don't want to keep it. Next, I have my Pinky Rose palettes. This is the Exotic Peacock. This one has been a favorite for years, and I still really enjoy it. I actually busted this one out over Halloween time to do a Beetlejuice themed look, and I still love this one. I think the colors are so cute and truly they have not come out with anything this good since they did this trilogy a few years ago and I still love it so much. This one is the 80s baby palette. I do still think this one is fun as well. I do like that purple red together with the pop of yellow and blue. It's just such a unique color story you know. I think I want to keep it. These palettes really did stand the test of time for me like I've been loving them for years. And last is the obsessed palette. This one is kind of like more neutral focused with pops of like pink, red, and blue, and yellow. This one's very like sunrisey, you know? And it's very pretty. I'll keep it. Next I have my Black Moon palettes. First is my Orb of Light Full Moon palette. And this one has honestly been a favorite for years as well, but at this point, I just don't know how badly I need it. What makes me want to keep it are these three down here, like these grungy yellow, orange, and red with the cool tone browns. I just don't know if I have to have this one anymore, which is crazy because I've loved this one for a long time, but I just don't think I need it. It's not sparking the same kind of joy. I think I'll give this one away. I think it's time. This one, however, is my Black Moon Urban Myth Palette. This one is so cool and spooky. It's based on like, you know, like myths, like the Boogeyman and Bermuda Triangle and crop circles and all the things. It's such a fun color story. I really like the tones in here. The shimmers are beautiful. I definitely want to keep it. This is my BH Cosmetics Blueberry Muffin Palette. I finally treated myself to it a couple months ago and wow, do I love this. I love the different blues in here. It's just so pretty and the shimmers are delightful and I even like the neutrals with this, so I definitely want to keep it. This is my Midas Cosmetics Smoky Glow Palette. I adore this palette so much. The different tones, the different shimmers, it is all good things for me. I love this one. This one is just so magical. She did such a good job. I'm so proud of Hannah. This one is my Glam Light Michaela Palette. This is my first and only Glam Light Palette. And again, this is a huge palette. I need to zoom out a little bit for this one too. It's just so pretty. I love the different colors in here. I think it's magical and amazing. The shimmers are so good and the tones make me so happy. I don't utilize the top row too much other than the willow shade over here because it's kind of like a deep purple. Um, but everything else I really do get a good amount of use out of and I definitely want to keep it. All right, let's go over my Give Me Glow. This is my Summer Vibes palette. This is used and abused. I've loved this one for years as well. I just think it's so fun. The metallics are so bright and so opaque and I really like the mattes as well. I think it's a lot of fun. This makes a beautiful blush, by the way. I'm gonna keep this one. This is my Pastel Dreams palette. This was actually a subscriber gift, and I'm so grateful for this because I almost passed on it, and I'm so glad that I have it because the mattes are so buttery and amazing, and the metallics are just as shiny as ever, and I'm so happy I have their formula in pastel form. It's so gorgeous. And this one. This may become one of my top palettes of the year, provided I love it as much as I love their palettes usually. This is Bad Witch Club. I literally just got this in the mail last night. It was my Black Friday order, so I have not played with this at the moment that I'm filming this, but by the time this video goes up, I'm sure I will have at least one, if not multiple videos up by then. It's so pretty. Look at these tones. We have kind of the purpley shades and the tealy greens and the like pinky purples. It's just all good. I love the bright coral pop in here. I adore this color story. My breath was taken away when I first saw them reveal this. I adore it so much. This is my Give Me Glow grunge palette. I've kept this one for years as well. 
It's just deep, grungy neutrals, and I'm really not keeping any other neutral palettes with these type of vibes, and I, I just always want to hang on to this one, so I think I'll continue hanging on to it. Honestly, I don't think I'm decluttering any of my Give Me Glow ones, just to let you know. This is my Vivid Rose palette. I got this at the tail end of last year, or very beginning of last year. It took a little while to ship because I bought it a little bit late, but I love this. I love the pinks and purples. The metallics are outstanding. This is absolutely incredible. I love it. And this one is my Vintage Rose. The pinks and greens, though. This is amazing. I think it's so much fun. It's just absolutely incredible, so I definitely want to keep it. And this Christmas morning palette still brings me so much joy. I love the just Christmassy tones and the metallics are amazing and this one just makes me happy every single year around holiday time. I love having this one in my collection. This is the Juicy Olive palette. One of my friends gifted this to me years ago and I just, I love it. It's just a green dream. I love the olive tones. It's one of my favorite colors of eyeshadow to wear, so I will definitely be keeping this one. And last is the Sweet and Sticky. This was also a gift and I love it. Like, it's not exactly like what I would have bought myself because I'm not a big neutral person, but seeing it in person, it's really pretty. I like the two shimmers they chose and I really enjoy the four mattes as well. I think it's a good variety of tone. And since I'm not keeping a ton of neutral palettes, I can totally justify keeping this one because this would be really nice to bust out if I just wanna do something kind of warm and glam. I think it's really lovely. Moving on, this is my Likely Makeup Ugly palette and it's so cute. I just got myself this recently. I've already done a bunch of videos with this. It's just so lovely. It's very chaotic and colorful and amazing and they blend so good and the shimmers are very metallic. They're not like shimmery glitzy, but they're very bright and I like them a lot, so I'm definitely keeping it. Let's chat about Lethal Cosmetics. This is the Lethal is Dead palette. This was the collaboration between Teresa's Dead and Lethal Cosmetics, and Teresa did such a good job. It's a spooky homage to horror movies, and I just love it. The names are so cute, and the color story is so pretty. I love the blues, and the pinks, and the purples, and the bright green. It's just all good things, and I totally want to keep this one. This is my Velvet Dusk palette. This was actually a Christmas gift from a subscriber last year, and I just, I still adore it so much. These are actually two of my favorite palettes in my collection currently, and two of my favorite that I've tried this year. I just love it. It's so dark and moody and amazing. Oh, these shimmers make me so happy, so I'm totally keeping it. And this one is my After Dark palette. This is just so pretty. I love the bright colors and it's just so much fun and it has kind of pastels, but brights, but also depth and the shimmers are so good. I love this and I'm just so grateful for this gift still. Should we do Odin's Eye next? I have a lot of Odin's Eye and spoiler alert, I'm keeping them all. So this one is the Alva palette, one of their first palettes they've released. It's just kind of like neutrals with pinky mauve tones and it's really pretty it's not the kind of color story i go for all the time but if i were to want like that mauve feel this would totally be the one i reach for and their shimmers are absolutely gorgeous and this one is the alva 2 palette i want to say this came out gosh i don't even know maybe springtime of 2021 I don't even remember. This one's not brand new, but it's not crazy old either. Maybe this came out this year or maybe the end of last year. Gosh, I can't keep up, but it's very bright. It's very fun. This was their palette. They put pressed glitters in and they didn't really do it again afterwards because I think people made it very well known. We didn't want pressed glitters and they don't need it. Their shimmers are so pretty. And this palette as a whole is so pretty. I love the brights, the pastels. It's all good things. We have some depth in here. It's so gorgeous. This is my Norns palette. I love this one. I just think it's so enchanting. The shimmers here at the bottom are so beautiful and reflective and shifty. It's so deep and so delicious and I just love it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. This is their original Freya palette, which is getting discontinued. It might already be gone at this point. Um, and you know what? This might be the Odin's Eye palette I can probably let go of, actually. I said I wasn't going to declutter any, but since this one honestly does spark the least amount of joy out of all of my Odin's Eye palettes, and this one's getting discontinued, I don't really have a major reason to hold on to this, and I think one of my friends might like it more, so I'm going to pass this one along. It is really pretty, though. And this one is my Soul Main palette. This is the first one I ever tried from them, and it still brings me so much joy. The pop of mustard and lilac make me so happy, and the different shimmers are so pretty. I think this is a very cute palette, and I want to keep it. Next we have the Saga of Freya palette. This one is a book style so there is a palette on this half and a palette on this half and it's 
very cute. I'll try to show you them both at the same time. I think it's a really fun color story, like both sets separately or together. I like this one, so I'm totally keeping it. I mean, like I said, I'm keeping all of them except that original Freya. Going along with that palette, this is the chapter one of that palette. This is the Amber Tears, and it's very pretty. Again, I love a pink, red, purple color story, and the shimmers are absolutely amazing in this one. Ooh, I love it so much. And this is the chapter two of that collection. This is the Cat's Breath palette, one of my favorites from them. It's just so pretty. I love the turquoise, it's all good things, and I love it. The shimmers are so special. Getting into the Legendary Diversa collection, Odin's I collaborated with three creators and they each created a palette and they're amazing. This is in collaboration with Judy. This is the Red Dragon palette and I just love it. These autumnal tones and these shimmers are so pretty. I love this so much. I love everything so much in case you're new here. I'm just kidding. Um, this one is in collaboration with Tina from the Fancy Face. This is the Hummingbird palette and it's just so bright and magical and this multi-chrome down here is everything. This is such a beautiful fun palette. And last but not least, this is in collaboration with my friend Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner. This is the Giant Wolves palette and my gosh is it beautiful. It's a grungy dream. I love the shimmer. The multi-chrome down here in particular is so good. I just adore this palette. We are almost done with Odin's Eye. Next we have just some little palettes. This one is the Mini Sky palette. It's just kind of like purpley pinky neutral, very cute. This one is the mini sky. It's kind of like a bluey orangey kind of feel. It's also quite lovely. And this is the mini forest. I love this one. I always call it my Legend of Zelda color story. This one is the schooled palette. This is an all shimmer palette. And before I mentioned that it has to be a really special all shimmer palette for me to keep it. And this one is so special to me. The shimmers are so shifty and amazing. I love it. This one is the Verdandi palette. It's just kind of like peachy neutral. And this one's also kind of solidifying that I don't need that sweet peach palette because it kind of has those peachy tones, but also with some extra spice with these shimmers being here. I love it. And last is the Erd palette. This is one of my favorites from Odin's Eye. I just love these deep greens and those shifty shades. Oh, it's so good. Moving on to Beauty Bay. This is the Age of Opulence palette. This is a newer palette from them. And it's just beautiful. The purpley shades with the blues and turquoises mixed up with the neutrals. I really like like this one. It's very colorful glam and I'm all about it. And this is the Wilderness palette. This is my first time ever trying a Beauty Bay palette and I fell in love with it. It's literally one of my favorite palettes of the year. These tones are just amazing. The blues with the grungy greens and the reds. It's just such a masterpiece. I adore it so much. And I had such a good time with the quality with both of these palettes. I can't wait to see what else they continue to do. Because honestly, if it's a color story that speaks to me, I'll probably buy it. Next up, we have Unearthly Cosmetics, formerly known as Alien Cosmetics. Um, this is the Not Normal palette, and I love it. I call it my grungy Beetlejuice palette, and I stand by that. I think this one is so much fun to play with, and the shimmers are so pretty. The mattes blend so nicely. Totally keeping it. And this one is the Hauntingly Glamorous palette in collaboration with Sydney Nicole Adams. And it's just so pretty. I love that it's both bright and deep. I love all the really dark, dark mattes. The two toppery shimmer shades are really pretty as well. I'm super into it. And this one is the Bunnies palette, and it's just full of so many beautiful shimmers. I do kind of wish the pans were all the same size. I don't mind it in the Sugar Pill Capsule palettes because I feel like it kind of fits that vibe, but this one I just kind of wish they were all the same, but it's not the end of the world. The shimmers in here are superb. I'm keeping this mostly for the shimmers, but the mattes are cute too. Next up, getting into Blend Bunny Cosmetics. This is what I'm deeming my favorite rainbow palette of the year. This is the Blends palette. This is so good. Just look at this masterpiece. I broke my yellow, so that's unfortunate, but I'm so thrilled with this. I fell in love with the Surge palette, which I'll show you in a minute, and the brand was so kind and offered to send me this one, and I'm so glad she did. She's so sweet, and I'm so thrilled because this is my new favorite rainbow palette. This is what made me get rid of my slice of paradise. It's just laid out so perfectly. It goes from pastel outwards to deeper shades, and we have kind of green, teal, yellow, blue, orange, purple, red, pink. It's just so good. This is such a staple, and the shadows honestly blend like a dream. I'm such a fan of this brand, and I can't wait to see what else they do. And this right here is the palette that sold me on them. This is the Surge palette. It's just so aesthetically pleasing. Again, like I mentioned before, if I'm gonna use a big palette, it needs to be special, and this is so special. One of my favorite palettes I've tried this year, we have neon, shimmers, really deep, deep shades. We have kind of grungy shades and we have these dusty pastels and I love it so much. It is 
absolutely amazing. All right, getting now into Kyla, formerly known as Musée Beauty. This is the Impressionism palette. This was their first palette that launched last year, and it's really pretty. I find their formula to be very easy to use, very beginner friendly, everything blends nicely, and the shimmers are very metallic on the eyes. They just look very wet looking. They're not crazy, like glitzy, shimmery. But they just look very metallic and wet, and I'm really a big fan of it, so I wanna keep this one. I think this is a nice, solid palette. And this one is the Rococo. My main gripe is they went so much thicker with their palettes since the beginning, but it's whatever. I Yes. This one's really cute. It's kind of like pastels with a little bit of like deeper jewel tones and a couple neutrals mixed in. I think it's a very cute color story and I want to keep this one as well. They also launched the Van Gogh last year. I really like this nine pan. It's grungy and deep and beautiful and I just adore it. They also launched the Le Jardin as their limited edition spring release. It looks like this and while it's very cute and I would 100% keep it, we have to talk about the next one. They recently relaunched it as the Le Jardin volume two and it's pretty much the same but it's the slightly deeper version and the thicker version. So here you can kind of see them compared. I also did do swatch comparisons in my latest new makeup releases PR roundup review video. Um, it's very similar. It's just the slightly deeper version. I don't feel like you need both. And if I'm going to pick one, I want the deeper one more. So I'm going to declutter the original and keep the new one. They also launched the Honor Ray palette and it's very pretty. It's just kind of like a garden. It's what it looks like to me. It's very colorful, but it's muted colorful, and I think it's quite lovely. And this is the Triumph of Venus. Lots of blues, some warmth in there. I think it's very cute. I'm into this one. All right, let's get into Shroud Cosmetics, formerly known as Strobe Cosmetics. They changed their name a couple years back. This is my Creepy Cute palette, and I still consider this my favorite pastel palette of all time. It's amazing. I think it's beautiful. The mattes blend amazing. They are available as singles, um, but it will be coming back. So if you're waiting for it, it will be back at some points, um, last I heard. This one is the Divinity, which I know is limited edition. I don't think it's totally sold out yet at this point, though, but it could be. I'm not positive. I still love this one though. I think it's very grungy, kind of fall and earthy, and I just love it. And next is the Arcana. I love this one. It is a jewel tone, grungy dream. I think these colors are so pretty and the shimmers are so rich and delicious and I adore it. It's so, so pretty. And finally, it's my collab palette with Shroud, the Batty Bean. I used to be Butte Bean, but I changed my name quite a few months back at this point. Um, I just don't have the new packaging, but that's whatever. Um, my It's Freaking Bats palette that I did with Shroud Cosmetics. I just, I love my palette so much. Mine is so beat up. <laughs> I have used this so much. I use it very often. I think it's so much fun and I'm just so proud of it and I love seeing your looks with it and it just touches my heart every time one of you buy one or you use one and you tag me it just oh, my heart is so full I love my palette and I'm so glad you guys do too it means so much to me I'm so proud of my color story oh I love it so much it is currently in stock at the moment that I'm filming this, and again, I will reiterate that it is limited edition. It will eventually be gone. She's just gonna continue restocking it as long as there's a demand, but once people lose interest, it will eventually be gone. So there's that. Let's do Kaleidos next. I think that would be fun. Let's get the big ones out of the way first. This is the Club Nebula palette that Angelica did in collaboration with Kaleidos, and I love it so much. Angie did such a great job. I love the brights mixed with the deep, rich jewel tones and the shimmers and metallics and multi-chromes are so beautiful in here. She killed it with this one. I'm so happy I own this. And this one is the Escape Pod palette. Mine is so squeaky. Oh, of course it didn't squeak the one time I mentioned that it's gonna be squeaky. It's just kind of like pinks, purples, orangey, blue, green. And honestly, like out of all of my Kaleidos palettes, this one sparks the least joy. Um, this blue does not work well for me. And I just feel like there are some repetitive shades in here, like the two oranges look very similar and the two shimmer greens look very similar. And as much as like I wanna keep it for certain shades, I feel like I have similar shades throughout my collection. So I'm actually gonna declutter this one. I know that's shocking. I don't declutter a lot from Kaleidos because they're one of my favorite brands, but this is just my least favorite palette from them. So I don't really think I need to keep it anymore. I never feel compelled to reach for it. This is my Flower Punk palette. This is honestly like my favorite release of the year. It's like one of my favorite palettes I have in my collection. It's so pretty. I think this color story is so unique. We have the bright turquoise with the dusty muted pinks and we have those grungy 
olive and chartreuse tones. The shimmers are so pretty. These two in particular also make lovely face highlights. I adore this palette so, so much. And next we have the Futurism palettes, one through seven. They have not launched one of these since last October, and I want another one because these are like my favorite. I love these small six pans with the unique packaging. It makes me so happy. I'm keeping them all. <laughs> with this one is the Sci-Fi Green, and I'm fairly certain they discontinued this one, which is so unfortunate because I adore it so, so much. This one is the Cyber Bronze, and even though it's very neutral heavy, I still really enjoy it. I like the shimmers that they paired with this. That silver in the middle is very vibrant. And I really enjoy the metallic red as well. This one is the Astro Pink. I love this one, especially that shimmer blue. It has such a beautiful shift to it. It's magical. This is the VR Neon, which also got discontinued, unfortunately, because it's so pretty. I love how bright the mattes are, and these duochromes over here are so gorgeous. I just, I love it. I love it so much. This is the Electro Turquoise, which used to be my favorite palette from them until the Flower Punk and what I'm going to talk about next showed up in my life but this one is so pretty. The shimmers in particular are so just sparkly and wet looking. I absolutely adore it. This one is the Lunar Lavender and it's my absolute favorite out of the six pans. It is so, 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 so stunning. I, I live for it. It's amazing. And the last Kaleidos palette is the Sash Sashimi City. My goodness, I can never say that on the first try. Um, it's beautiful, it's neutrals, but like lovely neutrals. They're not basic neutrals. And I love the two duochromes they chose so much. It's so beautiful. Let's chat about some Lunar Beauty. I have my OG Moonspell palette, which is gonna be so hard to show on camera because it's so reflective. <laughs> Oh, I hate showing these kinds of palettes. I think that might be the best I can do. But it's just grungy mattes with lovely shimmers and all of the names are themed around pop culture witches and I just, I love it. It's one of my favorites and it's just so aesthetic to look at. It looks like a freaking book, I love it. And then this one is the Moonspell Volume 2. I will start by saying I enjoy the color story of the first one more but I do still really like this one. I like the different purples, pinks and reds because I do love that combo and the shimmers in here are so pretty, in particular Luna. This one is absolutely stunning. I had a good time with this one. I think it's quite lovely. Next is the Strawberry Dream Palette, which was also a gift, and I did not know what I was missing until I tried this one. I can't believe I've slept on this one because it's so good. These bright colors down here are so saturated and lovely, and these kind of like, Shades in the middle are just like muted colorful and I love them and the shimmers are absolutely delicious. I adore this with my entire being. It's so good. And this is the Eternal Eclipse, also a gift and I'm so grateful for it. It's just like smoky blues and neutrals and it's amazing and again those shimmers are mouthwatering. I love this. It's so pretty. All right, getting into Game Beauty, this is the Adventure Palette. This is such a fun brand. They just came out last year, and they do all of their themes around video games. This one does have a pressed glitter in it, but it's the only one that has a pressed glitter. They stopped doing it after people gave their feedback and said they didn't really want that. I love this one, though. This reminds me so much of, like, Legend of Zelda. It's so cute, and it makes me very happy. It's just such a fun brand, and I always get really excited to see what they come out with next. The next one they released is the Fantasy Palette. Just look at the artwork. It's so pretty, and they just came out with t-shirts, actually that have like this design on them. It looks like this. It just kind of reminds me of like an Arctic enchanted wonderland. <laughs> it's so pretty. I really like the pastels mixed with some of these richer tones. This duochrome here is absolutely amazing. And Mana, they do such a good job with their marbled shadows. They truly look dimensional on the eyes. They don't just swirl looking like one basic shimmer. They're amazing and their duochromes are outstanding. This one is the Victory Palette. It's also quite lovely. This is definitely their most tame color story out of all of their color stories, but I still think it's quite lovely. I think the duochrome right here just takes the cake, and Glory especially, like this duochrome too, so good. I like the teal, the mattes blend out really nicely, and I think this is still a fun one to keep in my collection. And last, they most recently came out with the Harbinger palette. I really like this one. It's just very deep and smoky, and I, I just love it. This duochrome here, Dawn, is amazing, but Abyss, this marbled shadow, okay, I know I haven't really been doing swatches, but this time I gotta show you. So that's what it looks like just touching it. Let me actually swatch it. You ready for this? I don't think you're ready for this. Look at that. It literally shows up dimensional. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know how they do it, but they do it right. We only have a few more brands left. How about it? Let's do Melt Cosmetics next. My first palette I ever got for Melt is Gemini, and this was actually a gift, and I love it. It is a grungy dream. I do think they discontinued this, but I've heard rumors that it's coming back, so I don't know if it is or not. I hope so, because it's amazing. 
these olive greens and grungy browns. Oh, it just makes my heart so happy. The second palette I ever tried from them is the Muerte, which is still one of my favorite palettes in my entire collection. It's just so rich and amazing. I wish so badly they would bring this back because I know so many people still want this one. I just can't believe they would discontinue something that's like has so much hype, but it's just beautiful. It's so rich and amazing, and I love the shimmers. It's all good things. The next one I tried is the She's and Parties palette. This is what I got myself for my birthday last year, and I love it. It's just these lovely berry tones. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that the berry tones I was deciding between, I was kind of pinning against this one because I just love it. Kind of has those rich, deep berries and kind of those mauves, and it's just really beautiful. I feel so pretty when I wear this. The next one I tried is the Mary Jane palette, and I really like this one. This came out around springtime this year, and it's just smoky, cool toned, goodness and I actually like totally forgot about this when I was thinking about my cool tones when I was comparing the shadow kiss but this totally solidifies that I don't need my shadow kiss because this has such magical shimmers such beautiful rich cool tone mattes I love this palette melt cosmetics palettes get such hit or miss reviews but I've personally yet to meet a melt palette that I didn't like next is my millennial pinks I picked this up for myself when there was a sale I debated this one for a long time because again it got hit or miss reviews but I personally love it I think the mattes blend beautifully and I think the shimmers are lovely I think this is cute I think this is a fun color story kind of those blue grays with the dusty pinks it's very very pretty in my opinion and last is my 420 palette this was also a gift and I'm so thrilled for this it just gives me all the autumnal feels again this one also got spotty reviews but I personally love it I feel like the mattes blend nicely I think they're saturated and beautiful and it makes me so so happy to have this in my possession next let's chat about menagerie first we can talk about the feral palette this is my oldest palette from them we just have the those really pretty earthy tones. I like the shimmers in here, especially Wolfling. It's such a beautiful duochrome. I really, really enjoy this one. This is the Whale Song, one of my favorite palettes. Fun fact, I have an irrational fear of whales. They're just so big and scary. I don't like any aquatic life though. I'm terrified. Uh, but I think the color story is beautiful. It's kind of those grungy blues and greens and it's amazing and Oh, it's just so saturated. This one will stain your eyes. That doesn't bother me, but forewarning. Although I do think they discontinued this. They've discontinued a lot of their palettes. They might be available as singles though. Next is the Killer Purr palette. This is kind of like dusty, grungy neutrals. And I really do vibe with it. I actually used this again recently and I, I still think it's really pretty. I think it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy Menagerie's formula. It's incredibly pigmented, but I think they blend nicely and the shimmers are very, very pretty. Next is the Pastel Pup. This is more of like a book style format. It opens sideways, which I don't love that. I prefer regular, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's a really cute pastel palette. My only issue are the yellow and orange. They just don't really show up great on my pale skin. But everything else looks really nice. Everything blends really pretty. I love this kind of sea foamy, minty, turquoisey shade. It's all really pretty and the shimmer over here is gorgeous as well. This one is the Flight Club. This I think came out about a year ago, right? I think it came out last fall, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong though. I really enjoy the shimmers in here. I think it's very saturated and very pretty. And then we have two teeny palettes, which they did discontinue these. Unfortunately, I wish they would come out with more six pans because they actually do a beautiful job with their six pans. These might be available as singles though. This one is the Courtship palette and it's really, really cute. Again, this is kind of like those neutrals, but a little bit spicier, kind of like that Sashimi City palette from Kaleidos. I can't believe I said that on the first try. I really like this duochrome as well. Like, can you tell how pretty that is? I just love it. Um, yeah, it's not available anymore, but it could be available as singles. And this one is the Violet Ink Palette, which is also so cute. And I like it because it's more cool toned violets versus the warm toned purples in the Menagerie uh, Flight Club. This one's more cool. And I, I enjoy it a lot. I think this is so pretty. They just did a bigger like ink palette. I can't remember what it's called. Squid Ink. I don't remember. They came out with a big palette around this kind of theme. I didn't pick it up, but I did think it was cute. I do love this little one though still. I think it's lovely. And finally, we're getting on to Nomad Cosmetics. This is the Haunted Europe palette. It kind of does this like picture changey thing on the top. I love this one. It's one of my favorite palettes from them. For me, this half is my spooky graveyard and this half is my harvest pumpkin patch. <laughs> and I just love it. The shimmers are so pretty and the mattes are beautiful. The mattes are very beginner friendly in my opinion. They build up very softly, but they build up very pigmentedly. Uh, that's a new word. Um, I think this is so good. This one is my Orient Express palette and I have enjoyed this for quite a while. But at this point, I don't know if I need to keep it anymore. I do like some of the shimmers a lot, but I feel like I can get these similar shimmers 
throw out other things in my collection. I think I might pass this one along to a friend, but it is really, really pretty. And I guess piggybacking off of that one really quick, they did also come out with this with Ipsy. This is the Venice Simplon Express palette. And it's kind of like a mini version of the Orient Express. It's like a similar vibe, but just condensed. And again, it's cute, but I don't really think I need this in my life anymore. So I'm gonna pass it along. This next one is the America's Parks palette. And this one I adore. It's kind of like earthy, grungy shades and I live for it. They did such a beautiful job with it. This next one is my Tokyo palette and I will love this one forever. I love the pastels and this row of topper shades at the bottom are so magical and twinkly. I love it. This was my first palette from them actually. This was also a gift from a friend. This one is the Iceland palette. Ooh, this one might be my favorite from them actually. I just love it. These tones are so pretty and the shimmers are magical. They knocked it out of the water with this color story in my opinion. This one is my Cartagena Magica palette and it's so fun. This is like a summer explosion. I love the kind of pinky, orangey, reddy, yellow tones. This shade in particular is gorgeous. I. I love this. I think they did a good job. I don't reach for these colors as a whole too often, like these very warm, like orangey based colors, but when I'm feeling it, this is a good one to go for. It's so fun. Next is the Home for the Holidays palette. It is all shimmers and one black matte. I think it's pretty and the shimmers perform really well. However, I have so many pretty shimmers in my collection. I don't think I need to keep this one kicking on the side just to reach for for shimmers, but it is really pretty. And if you're looking for just shimmers, this could be a good one. Although it is limited edition and it could have already sold out by the time this video goes up, but I do like this one. I just don't think I need to keep it. And finally, very last palette to talk about is my Studio 54 quad. I actually really like when they do this glitter packaging. I think it's really pretty. Um, but it's a quad of four dimensional shimmers. And I do think it's pretty, but I just, I forget to reach for this all the time. And I think I'm gonna continue forgetting to reach for it just because I have so many things. So I think I'm gonna give this one to a friend so they can get more use out of it than I will. And now we just have a very small maybe pile, so let's just kind of speed through this. The Slave for Salma, as pretty as I think it is, I haven't reached for it this year, and I don't think I'll miss it too badly if I give it to a friend, so I think I will. Honestly, I'm gonna say that exact statement for a lot of these. Um, the Orchid You Not, I think it's pretty, but between my She's and Parties and my Menagerie Flight Club, I just, I kind of have similar tones to this sprinkled throughout, so I don't think I need to hang on to this one, but it is beautiful. All right, the Certify Affinity too. I think I can pass this one along. I have have a lot of blues and greens in my collection and honestly out of my blue green palettes the oceanic from ace vite and the whale song from menagerie i do prefer more so i think i can pass this one along the tribe oh this one's tough i'm still so unsure because i do really enjoy it it's just a matter of do i need it i mean really i don't need any of these nobody needs makeup but i feel like i might be okay without this one i don't know if i'll miss it too bad if i declutter it and give it to a friend so i think i will it's gorgeous but i just don't give it as much love as i feel like i should so i'm gonna give it to a friend and finally the temptress palettes you know what draws me to this are there a lot of cool tones in here it's cool tones with a pop of pink and you know what? I'm keeping some cool tone things in my collection. My Mary Jane palette from Melt, I honestly prefer for like my glitzy cool tone shimmers over this one. And I can get a pop of pink out of multiple things. So I don't think I need to hang on to this one any longer. All right, well, I have lots of piles in front of me. Let me do my final tally and I will get back with you with my final numbers. Okay, so I counted everything like 100 times. I did not have an 194 to start with. We had 218 to start with. I don't know how how I missed so many when I was counting them last night. Um, probably because I'm working all the time right now. <laughs> but I guess we talked about 218 today and out of all of those 218, I decluttered 59 and I'm keeping 159. So I'm still keeping quite a lot. And you know, I don't feel bad about it. I love the ones that I'm keeping and I don't feel guilty. So I'm proud of myself. I didn't really have a strict goal. Like I said, I wanted to keep it under 150 and closer to 100, but you know, if I did that, I'd be decluttering some things that I really love. And I still love a lot of these so much and I don't wanna get rid of them. So that's my plan. At the very end of this month, I will be doing a ranking 
all of the palettes I tried in 2021, so you will be seeing some of the decluttered ones again um, because I need to talk about them again for that video. I did do this style video halfway through the year where I ranked my like first half of 2021, but I'm gonna do it again, ranking all of the palettes I tried in 2021. I'm not ranking all of the palettes in my entire collection because that's a lot of palettes, but I will rank all the ones I tried in 2021, and honestly, a lot of the ones that I kept today are from 2021, so stay tuned for that. That will be at the very end of the month, and I'm really excited to do that as well. But before we go, let me give you the overview of all 218, not 194 palettes to start with. I tried really hard to kind of stack them and show them in a way that you could see them all because I could not lay them all out to make them fit. My table's only so big. Here are the 59 palettes that I am decluttering and here are the 159 things that I am actually keeping. I still feel pretty good about it. I'm not mad. I feel like I've condensed it. I've weeded out some things that I didn't really love anymore and I feel good about that. Thank you so much for watching my 2021 eyeshadow palette collection and declutter video. Do you have any of the palettes I talked about today? Do you want any of them? I would love to know what your absolute favorite eyeshadow palettes are. Let's chat all about it down below. If you made it to the end, leave me a cat emoji. Sometimes I ask for your favorite animal, but today we're gonna do my favorite animal. And if you like this video, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And if you're not already, you can follow me on my other socials. You can join the Batty Bean fam. I am Batty Bean on everything. I post every day on Instagram and I'm pretty active on TikTok and Twitter as well. And if you want, you can subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I'm posting every single day up until Christmas. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.